Hi Refuge Daily, this is Mike Rogers once again on this thankful Thursday. I just want to give thanks and praise today to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, he's gotten my wife and I, Michelle, here. She's the one working the camera right now. Uh, he's gotten us here 3,000 miles away from home. We live in Huntington Beach, California. We are now in Surf City, North Carolina. If most people know Huntington Beach is called Surf City as well. Well, here's another Surf City 3,000 miles away, and God's brought us here. We're just out visiting people, friend, family and friends, uh, having a, a real blessed time being able to do that. And I, I started thinking about how many people, and you probably have thought about this as well, how many people are leaving California. So many of our friends uh, have, and some family members have actually up and gone to different states like Texas, Tennessee, you know, those kind of places. And uh, we're still in California except for, for now, we're, we're on vacation. Kind of came to mind about different things on how the Lord sees, you know, what, what we're looking for and what we're doing. And I'm oftentimes wondering and asking the Lord, where do you want me to be? Um, he's given me a, a, a house, my wife and I and our family in Huntington Beach, California, but does he want us somewhere else? I don't know. I keep praying about that. I'm not sure he wants us to leave there. Um, and I'm not sure that he want, there's any place else that he has for us. But we want to continue to seek that out. And so um, we were also blessed this week, uh, just the, actually just yesterday, we were able to visit the Billy Graham Library. And that was such, a, such an awesome place to go. Highly recommend it. You know, that man, he built his house on a rock. Right now, I'm standing on sand. I'm standing on sand really close to the edge of uh, some marsh area. And, um, I, you know, when I think of Billy Graham and my wife and I just enjoyed the time that we spent in the Billy Graham Library there in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And he spread the gospel all over the world. He was called to do that. He felt that calling at a young age, 17, 18 years old. What a blessing. And he did that for over 60 years. And that library is just a great testimony of what God can do through one man and through many men, actually, because there was a lot of people involved and still are involved in the Billy Graham uh, uh, Evangelistic Society, the one that's uh, the association that's going out and, and spreading the good news. So here's a thought. As we build our homes, we guard our communities and work our, for our provisions. There's a greater power at work than our human effort. Three times in these next two verses I'm going to read to you out of Psalm 127. Uh, three times in these verses we are reminded that all our efforts are in vain unless they are covered by the blessings of the Lord. Of course, at Refuge, Pastor Bill and uh, Pastor uh, Jeff, they had gone through Ecclesiastes and Solomon had, had written most of that for our, uh, our benefit, but it was very difficult to go through some of it, very confusing. Some of it had to be laid out and some of it were still wondering what was his actual intent there on that. But in Psalm uh, 127, Solom Solomon also writes this. It's basically a song, one of the, what we call the song, Songs of Ascent. Um, and he, he states in verse 1 and 2, it lays out pretty clearly when God's talking about building your house and where you should build it, how you should build it. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. So the Lord needs to be in it. We see that all the time. We, uh, we've, I've certainly learned that in my life. If the Lord's not in it, I'm just laboring in vain. I'm toiling and tearing. It's like running on sand. You're not getting very far very fast and it's and it's a harder trek. Um, in verse 2 it says, it is, in vain, it, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat bread of the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. And so I think what he's saying there is that the, it's for us to worry about it. It's not, it's not beneficial for us in the long run. As a matter of fact, it's vanity for us to even worry about you know, where we're going to live, how, how those things are going to do. Not to worry about, but we, of course we want to consider that. And so that's what a lot of people are doing. They take up and they consider it. Hopefully they're praying before they decide that they're going to leave to another state or something like that where God is calling them. That's where you want to be. And uh, I think that uh, he makes it very clear that he also, for he gives his beloved sleep. So we get to rest. When we do that, when we come before the Lord, we get to rest in what he has provided for us. We can be content in that. 
and uh, and yet it's very difficult in this year, in this world right now, and particularly for us Christians, it seems, to be content. And in Southern California, one of the most beautiful places in the world to live, actually, um, in, in many respects, weather-wise, you have the beaches, you have the mountains, you have lakes, you have rivers, you have just about everything. But we were le less than content there in many ways where we want to get out of there. Um, that's why this has been on my mind. Um, and, and, and it goes on and Jesus, when we think about Jesus, what he, how he considers building a house, these are some, uh, this is uh, some verses right out of Matthew's gospel in chapter seven when Jesus says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them as he spoke to them earlier with many, many different directions, uh, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And like I said, I'm standing on sand right now. I wouldn't want to build a house here but there is this plots for sale and you can build a house here. There's a house right next door. You, you definitely want to work on that foundation. And so um, that's one of those things that uh, we definitely want to keep in mind. Where, where, are we, where are we standing? We want to stand firm in the Lord, the rock, Jesus Christ. We, we stand on that. And he's, in, in uh, Matthew's gospel, he says um, that in verse 26, he says, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. That's what I'm standing on right now. I definitely wouldn't want to build a house here. Um, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And it was a great fall. You remember the story of the three little pigs? I was thinking about that as I was putting this together, and I was thinking, you know, you, you, you look at the, the three little pigs and how they built their house of straw, wood, and then the other one built it of brick. They all ended up in the brick one because that was solid. It was the rock material, basically. And our rock is Jesus Christ. So before we make a decision on how or where or when we're going to build a house, we want to seek the Lord's guidance and all of that. And that's what we're doing right now, my wife and I, as we enjoy this time of uh, vacation, we're actually considering where does God want us? And very likely it could be right where we're at. Not maybe here where we're at, or maybe it is here where we're at in, in North Carolina today. Or maybe it's in Huntington Beach where we've been and loving the Lord and enjoying the time at refuge with the family there. Also, uh, we have in Psalm 43 a couple of good words that I think is important for us to consider. In, in Psalm 43, verses 3 and 4, it says, Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. Let me just read that one verse one more time. Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let, let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live, Lord. That's where I want to be. I want to be in the, wherever you are, Lord. That's where I want to be. And in verse 4, it says, There I will go to the altar of God to God, the source of all my joy. We're not gonna get joy in any house, any place else if God's not in it. So we wanna remember that before we decide that we're gonna build or where it's gonna be. And then it closes out by saying, I will praise you with my harp, O God, my God. Just making it very clear, who are we really trusting in? And that is our Lord. As I said, we were at the Billy Graham Museum. The, uh, the, it's also, or it's a library and museum is what it is. It's also the burial place of Ruth and Billy Graham. Ruth Graham, a wonderful wom woman of God, uh, once said by Billy to be the greatest Christian he's ever known. And that, that what, a, what a great testimony that is for him to say that in public and, and on, uh, uh, on film. We were able to see that. But on her uh, memorial stone that she has there, uh, there's a story of Ruth going down the road one time and seeing a demolition site where they had torn away a bunch of things and they were getting, looks like they were getting ready uh, or the, 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 the project was completed, but there was a sign up and the sign said this, and Ruth asked to have this on her memorial stone and it said, end of construction, thank you for your patience. And as Ruth was thinking of those things, I think she's thinking to, to the Lord, okay, here I am in my grave. This is the end of the construction because as we live, we're constantly in construction. It's like a house. You know if you're a homeowner, it's never completely finished necessarily in many people's minds. But 
she's thanking the Lord for his patience with us because sometimes we just toil and we, we we're always looking for a better way not content in what we're doing and I'm not saying that that's always wrong sometimes we should be looking for a better way but the best way is first to seek the Lord look for his way and then as we look and we ask him to lead us to his holy mountain we want to be where god's at if god's not in it we won't we, we should not want to be a part of that and that's what we're seeking we pray for you if that's what you're th seeking there's lots of people in california thinking about where they should be and maybe it shouldn't be there but just pray to the lord maybe he wants you there maybe he doesn't but pray to him and then look seek him out on his holy mountain may god bless you and i hope you have a great thursday I want